Hey there everybody, I'm Kara Plitchenich and today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to create this gorgeous, hand-drawn looking watercolor illustration in Photoshop without actually drawing or illustrating anything. To get started, I'm gonna create a new blank document by choosing File, New, and I'm gonna put in a width of five, a height of seven, and resolution of 300. I'm gonna leave the background white and go ahead and click Create. So the first thing we wanna do is create the shapes that are gonna be our flowers. Now they look hand drawn, but they are not at all. So here is the trick. We're gonna come over here on the toolbar and find the custom shape tool. Once we've got that selected, if we come up here into the control panel, we can click this little drop down, and if we scroll to the bottom, we're gonna see that there are folders here with different shapes and you'll notice that one of them is called flowers. So I'm gonna twirl this down and the one that I used in my example is this one right here. But obviously you can use whatever you want. So I'm going to double click to select it and close that flyout. Up here in the control panel, we wanna make sure that we have shape selected not path and not pixels, but shape. So you could leave the fill empty since we're technically gonna be painting it, but if we want to be able to overlap the shapes without a problem, then we're gonna to want to select a white fill color. So white for the fill and black for the stroke, and then we're gonna go ahead and just drag this out. So I'm holding shift to constrain my proportions. Depending on your settings, you may or may not need shift. So this is our first flower. So I'm gonna rename this and just call it flower 01. And with my move tool active, I'm gonna hold down alt or option and drag out another instance of this flower but I wanna change how it looks a little bit. So I'm gonna rotate that by pressing Command or Control T and hovering out here by one of the corners and then clicking and dragging to spin it around, and mix it up a little bit. Then I'm gonna hold down Alter Option again and drag it out over here, maybe like that. And this time I'm gonna, let's say flip it. So I'm gonna press Command or Control T, right click or Control click and choose Flip Horizontal just to mix this up a little bit so they don't look so cookie cutter. So now we've got a total of three and I'm gonna reduce the size of these two and rename these layers. So this one right here is flower 02 and I'm just double clicking right on the words here to type over it and then press enter. So I'm gonna select flower three and I'm gonna hold down command or control to also select flower two, and then I'm gonna press command or control T, and we'll scale these down a little bit, about like so. Let's make just a couple more. So I'm gonna take, let's say flower three, with my move tool, I can option or alt drag again, and make another one down here, and again, another one over here. So let's call this one, which is this one, this one right here, flower 04, and this one will be flower 05. So I basically just wanna move things a little to just create a nice composition. So arrange your layers panel and your different flowers until you're happy with how everything is looking. Next, we're gonna add in some leaf shapes. So I'm gonna press U to go back to my custom shape tool and open this up. Now, some of these flowers here have leaves, but they're not gonna work for what we are building. So I'm gonna scroll up. And one of the things I love to do is to just see what I can find in the shapes panel and then reuse it in unexpected ways. So here are some different leaves. And what we're gonna use is this guy right here. So I'm gonna double click to select it. I'm gonna keep that white fill with the black stroke and make sure I'm still set to shape. And now I'm just gonna click and drag, again, holding shift depending on your preferences. And I'm gonna 
just put some leaves coming out here and I'll hold Alt or Option with the Move tool, drag another one over here and Command or Control T and maybe let's flip that. If you Control click or right click inside there, you can choose Flip Vertical and we'll just move this around perhaps like so. And then the one last piece, I guess these are called grass and grass <laughs> 31 copy. So I'm just gonna call it leaves one and leaves two. Okay, and finally, I'm gonna go back to the custom shape tool. So I'm pressing U on my keyboard or I can grab it over here. And let's take another look what else we might find this. I think they call it a fern. Yeah, so I'm gonna double click that guy and click and drag this out and transform it just like we've done before. And tuck it in about here and drag it to the bottom of the shapes. So it's in the back of the bouquet. You can also use your arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge things around if you need to fine tune it. I think this is looking great. So the final piece of this whole thing is some sort of vase to hold all of it in. So I'm gonna go back to the custom shape tool and this time I thought that this water drop shape could work for a vase. So if you find something else you like better, by all means, go ahead and use it. But I like the look of this. So I'll show you how we make this work. I'm gonna double click to select it. I've still got my white fill, black stroke, and shape selected. And I'm gonna click and drag. Now if we wanted to flatten out this bottom a little bit, we can come over to the toolbar and grab the direct selection tool and don't be afraid, this allows us to click on this point right here, and then we can stretch out the side. So I'm holding shift so that I stretch this straight without like dragging it at a weird angle like that. So I'm gonna hold shift and drag this one out to just give it a little bit of a flatter bottom, but totally optional, you don't have to do that. So then I'll go back to the move tool and click away and I think that looks pretty good, but if we zoom in, remember that I told you we were going for kind of a hand-drawn look? And this vase is clearly perfection. Like these lines are way too perfect and not hand-drawn looking at all. So I'm gonna show you how we can give them more of a hand-drawn look. So this is our raindrop layer, so I'm gonna rename it and call it vase. I'm gonna come up to the filter menu and choose distort zigzag. And then we're gonna get this message that says, we have to either turn it into pixels, because remember it's a shape here, it's a vector shape. So we either have to turn it into pixels, which is called rasterizing it, or we can convert it to a smart object. So let's do that. We'll change our view here so we can actually see. And the key to this is very subtle. So I actually, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So I just want to kind of mess up the perfection of these perfectly smooth lines. So I don't want to do something crazy like this. So I'm going to set the amount to one and you, we can determine how many ridges we want this to have. Um, I went with five, but you can completely do whatever you think and you can change the way that this is applied out from um, the center or as pond ripples or around center. So that's what I've chosen. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you see how it just gave it a little bit of a wobble? I love it. The fern is another one that's a little bit too perfect. So I can just highlight it here and press Command or Control F and it's going to rerun that filter. Although, you know what? It did rerun it without making it a smart object first. So let's undo that. So if you want it to be a smart object also, you'd have to right click or control click and change it to a smart object and then press command or control F and click okay. 
and now it will run it too. And I think I might even do that to the leaves as well. So we have leaves one and we have leaves two. Let's make those a smart object and run that same filter. So now this is looking a lot more organic and we haven't drawn a single thing. We're gonna take all of these shapes and group them together. So I'm gonna click the vase, that's the most bottom one, and I'll scroll all the way up and shift click to select them all and I'm gonna group them by pressing Command or Control G. So now they're a group and we are ready to paint. When we put our paint down, we always wanna be on a new blank layer. So I'm gonna click to add a new blank layer and we'll rename this paint. And the colors that we're gonna be using, I've created a Mother's Day floral color scheme here. And this is available for free download. So if you look in the description below, you will find the link where you can download a bunch of free goodies that include the color swatches um, and also my finished files as well as some blank files in a variety of formats. So if you don't wanna create your own composition here, you can just get started painting right away. But before we paint, we need to get the right brush. That's really important. So over in our toolbar, we wanna grab our brush tool and up here in the control panel, we're gonna click this little preview of the brush and this shows us all the different brushes that we can choose from. Now, I probably have more than what you may have if you've never played with your brushes before. But what's cool is everybody who is a Creative Cloud subscriber can download these same free brushes from Adobe. And the way that you do that is you come over in this flyout menu and you click the cog wheel right here and you choose get more brushes. And that will take you to Adobe's website where you can download a gazillion different brush packs from Kyle T. Webster. And the one I'm gonna be showing you today is this watercolor pack. So if you haven't done that, pause the video, go get the watercolor pack and come right back. And then, <laughs> Here in the watercolor pack, you're gonna twirl it open, and I chose to work with this one right here, Kyle's Real Watercolor Basic 50. So I'm gonna double click to select it, and I'm gonna go to my swatches. If you don't have your swatches panel, you can find it, Window Swatches. And I'm gonna start with this peach color right here. So I'm gonna click to select it. And now I'm ready to paint. If you need to change the size of your brush, you can do that by using the left or right bracket keys. Those are next to the letter P. So the left bracket key makes it smaller, the right bracket key makes it bigger, and then you can just start painting. And what's really cool, I'm gonna show you a couple of things. So even if I'm really sloppy, let's say I, I mean, I am all over the place. In fact, kind of the sloppier that you are, almost the better because that's gonna help with that hand-drawn look. This is pretty bad, but I'm gonna show you how we clean it up in a minute. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We have a couple things that we need to fix. One, we need to change the blend mode of this from normal to multiply. So that way we can see our line art underneath it. And here is the trick. So if I zoom in, you can see that I've colored all kinds of outside the lines <laughs> and that's okay. So to fix that, if you want to make your painting just appear within the flowers or the leaves themselves, you're gonna take this paint layer that's above group one and you're gonna hold down Alt or Option until you see this funny little icon and then you're gonna click. And that will clip the paint so that it only appears any place that it overlaps your shapes. So that still means that I could like accidentally paint the fern right here pink, but it will get out all of the paint that was maybe spilled out here in this area. So you see, I can't color outside the lines anymore. So that's pretty helpful. So I'm going to make my brush a little smaller to get into these 
detailed areas. So for these areas that are outside of this flower, but still within another flower, we have a couple of choices. You could redo this grouping and you could create a paint layer for each individual flower and clip it to that flower. Another thing you could do is not worry about that. <laughs> and if you want to clean up some of these edges here, you can change your um, option up here to mode instead of normal. This is a cool trick. You can change it to clear. And that basically makes it work like an eraser, but it's still the same brush. So it's, it's just painting clear paint right now, which and it saves you from having to go get the eraser and then setting the eraser up to behave like your watercolor brush. So it's just, it's a really cool feature. And I don't want to clean this up too perfectly because we are going for that hand-drawn look. So let's make our next flower over here go get uh, a different color. I'm going to choose this lilac color and I'm going to change my mode back from clear to normal. Make my brush a little bigger and paint in this guy. I'm also going to paint this flower with that same color. All right, and I'll go get another color for these last two flowers. So before we move on, you want to zoom in and take a peek and just see if there's any other areas that you want to clean up or where maybe you had the wrong color. Like I can see that I painted what essentially is the vase I painted over with this purple. So I'm going to use my brush in clear mode to address that. You know, if the vase is really bothering you, you could always take the vase, drag it out of the group by just dragging it down. And you see now it's popped out, so it's not indented. So now it's not part of that group anymore. And now this paint layer will not clip to it. So that will automatically get all the paint off the vase. So I think maybe I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then to paint in the vase, I'll make another new layer. Let's see, we'll call this paint vase. And I'm gonna clip this by holding Alt or Option and then clicking in between here. And then let's go back to our swatches and I'm gonna get this cool gray. Make sure my brush is in normal mode. So now because this vase layer is on because the vase is no longer part of the group and because it has its own paint layer, we don't have to worry about messing up our floral paint. All right, and to add our finishing touch, we're gonna add a texture layer. So we're gonna click the topmost layer. In this case, it's our paint layer. And then we're gonna come down to the bottom of the layers panel and click the adjustment layer icon and create a pattern adjustment layer. So you want to dig into your legacy patterns and more, and then your legacy patterns, and then keep going down and you want to look into the artist surfaces folder. And this one right here is called watercolor. So you'll click to select that and then go ahead and click okay again. And we're going to change this blend mode to multiply. And when you zoom in, you can see that it adds a little bit of texture. Not a ton, but just a little bit. And you know what? That's really all that it takes. And there you have it. So if you wanna download the finished files that are ready for your painting, and you want the color swatches and some bookmarks, make sure to check out the link in the description below.